how much should you charge per hour as a handyman? We're going to be getting into that as well as how to determine that number. So we're going to get right into it here with the iPad. Let me turn on the screen record real quick. All right, we're all set. So the first way or the first step in the process is we need to determine the business overhead. This is going to be, um, let's see, overhead. It's going to be, let's say, insurance. This is going to be biz slash truck insurance, whatever. That's terrible, but you can see it. Um, Let's say we got equipment. And then we got tool purchases because tools will break. Or like tool replacements, I guess, because there's tool purchases um, in a different section. You got gas. You got website. Uh, you got accounting, possibly, like QuickBooks. And then maybe employees. So you got all that, and that's going to be your business overhead. Now there could be more depending on your business, but generally most handyman businesses is a one man show. So you basically just got insurance, you've got tools, website maybe, it's usually pretty lean. So let's say for example, overhead is, um, gotta get some more space here. Overhead let's say is, for the sake of, let's just say 1500 a month, 1500 a month. So we'll have that number and write this down, overhead 1500 a month. So we're gonna take that number and we're gonna save it for the next section or for a later section. So now that you got your overhead determined per month, you need to determine your living expenses because this is what you're going to be getting, how much you need to make per month to live. So living expenses, wow, I need a stylus or something. Well, not right there, okay. So we got living expenses. So this is gonna be your rent, mortgage, uh, car payment, which I would do if you have a truck payment for the or something you use for your business that obviously goes into the overhead. But this could be like a personal car, your wife's car, I don't know, something. Uh, this is just like a living expense that no matter what bit, no matter if you weren't a handyman, if you were working, if you were a cashier or something, whatever, I don't care what you're doing, but this would be something you would still have to pay for regardless, if that makes sense. So, this you need to do food utilities this is not writing um then you're gonna want to put savings you know you want to like you don't want to be starving like you want to make sure you're getting enough to live save uh you want to do retirement retirement and you want to be able to do like some giving and you want to do just odds and ends whatever let's just say misc whatever else I forgot in there. So let's say all of this adds up to, let's say 6,500 a month you need to live. Just, let's just say, I mean, that's a pretty high number, but I just want to kind of show where the math checks out and see, kind of surprise you guys how high of an hourly rate you probably will be going for, to be honest. And, and in 6,500 in some markets is nothing. So it depends where you are, but around me, like 6,500 a month, you're balling, to be honest, like everything's really cheap. So. 6,500 a month living expenses. Okay. So that is 6,500 a month. Next, the third thing we got to determine is the business profit. I aim for 15 to 20% business profit. Um, and this is going to be giving you money outside of your salary. So you're not taking, well, how the heck did I do that? Okay, this is gonna be business profit, which is going to be 15, 20%. And this is gonna be just used outside of your salary. So you're not taking the money that you're earning to pay for the business. If you do this right, a business should be profitable. And I like to aim for 15, 20%, like I said. 
This will buy future trucks or vans, I guess. A lot of guys use vans. I had a van once. Uh, tools, buy new tools, equipment, like heavy equipment. Um, maybe buy a shop, garage at some point. Stuff like that. So like I said, 15 to 20%, I like to aim for. So to get this, we will add up our 1,500 a month plus uh, for our overhead plus 6,500 a month for our living expenses, which gives us eight grand a month. And I'd like to multiply that by, let's go 20%. So that's 1,600 a month profit after everyone is paid and everything else is paid for the business. So we have a, so we need to make plus 8,000. We need to make 9,600 a month, a month in this situation. So how you're gonna determine your hourly need from here is you're gonna take this 9,600 right here and you're gonna divide this by the number of hours that you're gonna work that month. Now, people will be like, oh, I work 50, 60 hours, whatever. That's great, you might be, but you're not on the job site a lot of times, those 60 hours. It's very hard to get billable hours and the billable hours is what matters. So I like to aim for 30 billable hours a week. 30 hours a week. This is usually pretty safe. You might hit 40, you might hit 50 once in a while, but I think 30 is pretty easy to do. And cause like when you're driving, you're not getting paid for all this stuff. Um, like on site, can't charge the customer. Oh, well, you know, I had to drive to the next customer after you, so I gotta charge you. Like it doesn't work that way. So 30 hours a week. So you're gonna take this 9,600 9,600 and you divide this by 30, Ooh, not 300, got a little carried away there. All right, jeez, 30, so 96. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that is a week, oh, my bad, my bad. I jumped the gun. So 30 hours a week times four, right? So you're gonna be getting 120 hours a month. There we go. Stupid. All right, divided by 120 hours a month. So you need to be charging in this situation, $80 an hour. And this $80 an hour, I'll let you kind of look at that for a second. Okay, let's clear it. So $80 an hour working, working on site billable hours, 120 hours come on hours a month equals 9600 a month in revenue which would equate to as we broke this down before 1500 overhead 6500 to you for expense for living expenses and 1600 profit for the business. Profit. So that would be how you would charge as a handyman or how you would figure out how much you need to charge as a handyman. This is basically foolproof. I mean, if you can, now if you wanna go ahead and you put all your stuff in and you're like, man, it comes out to like 40 bucks an hour. Well, 40 bucks an hour is a handyman, I'm gonna tell you straight up, way too cheap. So if that's all you need is $40 an hour for all your stuff, I would just hike that up to $60, something crazy like that. Well, crazy to you, but I mean, I charge 100 an hour here and I'm honestly thinking I'm gonna raise it again because it just doesn't seem to be enough lately. So I think $60 an hour would be more than fair in that situation and just use that as your profit or put extra retirement, whatever. And in the future, we're gonna be going over retirement options for a handyman, I think it's very important. This is not something you wanna be doing when you're 65, 70 years old. This is, you need to have an exit plan. I don't care if you love it, I don't care 
if this is like your dream, I don't care. You're not going to be one doing this physically at seven years old and you're going to want to be able to retire. Um, so we'll be going over that in the future, but yeah, hopefully this helps you guys out and it, it works pretty good. I usually like to do per job. I find that I can make more money that way and it's easier for the customer to kind of digest the price rather than saying such a high hourly rate. Sometimes they get like overwhelmed, like, well, that's a lot of money, but if you just have a set price, they know that's what it's gonna be and they're kind of okay with it because they there's no surprises type deal for the most part. I mean, yeah, if something crazy comes up, you gotta charge extra, but yeah, so I think, I think this should hopefully help a lot of you guys out and uh, I'll see you in the next one, thanks.